agents waited on things to happen. That means they sit in the model and they wait on people to walk in. They wait on the phone to ring. One of my core philosophies in life is to never allow another person to stand between you and your destiny. You see how powerful that is? I'm never going to leave my financial future up to anybody else outside of me. So my point is, once you figure out what your passion is and what your drivers are, people think, you know your passion, you got to follow that passion to make a living. But not always. As long as you're getting a fix of your passion through doing what you're doing, you are going to be more successful professionally and in your personal life. Selling is about emotions. Selling is about, let me show you how to break this subdivision. Selling is because this is the hottest thing in the world. You got to be part of this. You understand what I'm saying? That's selling. It's getting people excited. It's not, it's not saying walk through the house and if you like anything, come back and see me. You follow what I'm saying here? So it's up to you. When I sales people as realtors, everyone wants results. So it's up to you. Do you get engaged and get focused in a short period of time or you take longer? As simple as that. I do not attract people that are interested in mediocrity. I do not attract people that are lazy. I attract people who want to be the best. I attract people that want to grow significantly. So you I don't need a coach because something's wrong. You got to get out of your brain that people only turn to coaches when everything's going wrong. The top people in the world have coaches because they want to go to a higher level. Does, does that make sense? So if you're doing 40 deals a year or 50 deals a year or 10 deals a year, you may say, I know I want to get to that level, but I don't know how to do it. You know it's possible because why? Somebody else is doing it. Good afternoon, everyone. How are you guys doing today? And thanks for coming out. This means a whole lot to me and my team for you guys to make the time on this gruesome day. Rain comes down, rain comes down. What I'm originally from in our culture, when it rains, it's supposed to be auspicious. So I'm going to take that as a blessing from God for me today. How does that sound? All right. First, what I'm going to do is go over the agenda, what we're going to be covering today. I'm going to introduce Coach Bird as well. So on the agenda, I'm going to introduce myself. I know most of you have known me over the years from Realtor World, from my prior work experience. We're going to give you a quick summary about my background. I'm going to talk about my passion, what's my driver. I'm going to, of course, talk about Coach Bird. He's going to be introduced. And then we're going to unwrap for you certain concepts and ideas that help you in your business growth. Now, most of you are here from Builder World, salespeople, and Realtors, but it does not matter what industry you come from. What you're going to be learning today, that unfold for your success strategies will help you in any avenue of business that you follow. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. So Coach Bud and I will be unfolding six foundational key concepts. Okay? We'll talk about six of them at a high level, but one of them we'll focus on is called EOS. Okay? So as we go into the next few slides, start thinking about response to a question, which is, what do you do for a living? Very simple question. So I'm thinking about what do you do for a living? And Coach Bert or I may call you out and say, hey, Lauren, what do you do for a living? So prepare yourself for that answer. Whatever you want to say. Does that make sense? Who does not want to be called out? Tell me right now. All right, looks like, looks like you're all in game, right? Fantastic. And of course, Q&A. Am I blocking your view over here? Is it good? Is it right? Okay. So more about myself, now I was born in India. I moved to US back in 2001, and I moved to US to go to grad school, went to LSU. Any LSU Tiger fans over here? One, two, a few over there, fantastic. So went to LSU, went to grad school, got my master's in information systems, and I'm a certified internal auditor, C C CISA, which is IT auditing. So I did that for 12, 14 years, and then I switched careers. So my first job getting out of LSU, was with a company called Deloitte. It's the largest consulting company in the world. They have practices all over the world. Worked with them for about six, seven years. Then I switched careers. I moved over to TransOcean, so offshore drilling company. Worked with them for about six years. I was an internal auditor. I would travel offshore to the rigs. The one, you guys remember the BP oil spill that happened? Gulf of Mexico? The rig that went down? That's the company I worked for. And at that very day, I was actually on a rig 
in Canada. It's a very scary moment, but I went past that. Did all that for about 12, 14 years. And back in 2013, I joined Remax Fine Properties. I joined Minesh Patel and Dimesh Patel, the industry leaders in the Sugarland, Houston, in America. Is that right, Manesh? Yes, sir. So I joined them. I was a part-time realtor. I was struggling with the, between two jobs, being in corporate America, doing real estate. Did that for six, eight, nine months in 13. And I said, you know what? I love this. I love this. And one thing was crystal clear in my mind. I wanted to be an entrepreneur. And what brought me into being in real estate where I made the Seth Brothers team, the other good looking guy on the left with the red tie, Sonic Seth right over there. We go by Seth Brothers, disclaimer, we're not brothers, all right? He's actually my brother-in-law, my sister who's sitting right over here. That's the connection. And we just happen to have the same last name. But till date, they've been married for almost 10, 12 years. She claims the only reason why she married him because she didn't have to change her name on the passport and all those things. <laughs> Made it simple. Seth works with Seth. All right? So that's about me. So we started the team back in 14. Last four, four and a half years, we've grown as a team. But as of today, we have a team of 16 team members, part of Remax Fine Properties office over here. Last year, just to give you quick stats, we closed about 63 million sales volume. Our team was ranked number 14 in Texas in the Remax world. Team was ranked number nine by Houston Business Journal for luxury home sales. And uh, we won GHP Realtor Team of the Year Award in 16. Uh, in back in 14, I won GHP Realtor of the Year. And then back in 14, first year, and Nimesh and Manesh were kind enough to nominate me for Remax Rising Star in the State of Texas, which I was honored to win back in 14, first year in business. That's a quick summary about us and, and the team. Thank you, Manesh. And you gotta roar the claps and Coach Bird comes on me. This is good, but that better be better, all right? <laughs> all right, so Coach Seth on my background. Okay, more about me. You know, what people see of me today, being an entrepreneur, being a successful realtor, being a successful team lead, alongside with Sonnet, all you guys see is up over here, okay? What you don't see is the struggles, the hard work, the discipline, the disappointment I've had throughout my career, going to high school, doing my undergrad, standing in line in India at three o'clock in the morning to be interviewed for my visa to come to US. And that one person who's interviewing me could have said yes or no. So the process to come over, so I've gone through all the struggles. So what people see of me and people see of you is what they see above the water, right? So my philosophy is this, the more people know of you, no matter what position you're in, you're a realtor, builder, manager, wherever you're at, the more we'll be engaged with you and aligned with their vision and goals. Does that make sense, right? So with the same philosophy, my goal, my vision is that I can be teaching or I could be coaching. Big difference between the two. Conceptually speaking, teaching is I just come and tell you what to do. Whereas when someone becomes a coach, what they first do is tell the crowd, tell the audience, tell the people they're mentoring or coaching who they are. If you know who I am and I know who you are, I'm in a better position to coach you and make you more successful and work on your strengths. Okay? As an analogy, as an example, if I were to be a, a coach, a head coach of a football team, and someone wants to join my team, well, they can be in the defensive line, offensive line, special team, they can be in any kind of role. If they're on the field, what position they play. So if the coach is not determining what the person's strengths are, what the key skill sets are, they'll just be a player on the team. Based on the same philosophy, I want to share with you my background, my history, and who I am. Once you know me better, you'll understand where I'm coming from, what the intent of this coaching session is, all right? So there's something called as DISC profile. Some of you have done it, some builders do it, some people do it, it's called D-I-S-C. I'll give you a quick rundown about my own DISC profile, high, high level overview. So D-I-S-C, what it means is you have a you know, 20, 30 page, uh, 20, 30 questionnaire that kind of spits out a report, are you a D, are you a I, are you a S, or are you a C, okay? Fundamentally, no matter what you do in life, you could be a housewife, you could be a professional, you could be an athlete, the DISC profile is your personality, okay? So more about my DISC profile. When you look at the spectrum, someone who's high D is demanding, driving forceful. Someone who's low D is agreeable, mild, conservative. Someone who's high, persuasive, inspiring. Low, withdrawn, aloof. High S, spontaneous. Uh, sorry, low S, spontaneous. High S, patient, cautious. So typically, when you're looking at someone who's in sales, they need to have some element of S, so, uh, sorry, need to have an element of D and I, which is these two. 
If you are in an operation role, taking care of transactions or administrative kind of role where you have to follow the checklist, the SC profile is ideal. Okay, that makes sense? So on my profile, I'm all the way to the roof, a DI. If this scale could have gone 1,000, I would have been up there. So is that a strength? Is that a weakness? No. There's no right, there's no wrong. That's who I am. And I'm a low S, I'm a low stabilizer. But on the flip side, when I'm talking to Sonic, my business partner, with the complete opposites. His strongest one is S, and his lowest one is D. That's why we are kind of good business partners. My wife, the same thing. She's all the way SC to the top, and she's low DI. So knowing your skill sets, knowing your disk profile is imperative. In fact, I went the extra mile. I had my mom do the disk profile. I had my dad who's sitting back there do the disk profile. I had my sister do the disk profile. So when I talk to them, I know what pushes the button, what they like, what they don't like, and how can I communicate with them effectively. Because no matter what you do, if you can communicate effectively, get better results. Does that make sense? So I'm gonna fly through all of this. So this report kind of tells me what my drivers are. It talks about you know, uh, what really motivates me every day. So the two high spectrums, I'm a high political person, so I'm, I'm a high leader, but I'm also low altruist, which is I guard my trust level so I'm not to get burned, either by self or for the team, okay? More about me, this is the kind of work environment that's ideal for Kunal, which is challenges, perform appraisal based on results, direct answer from others, my key strengths, juggle multiple projects, excellent initiating activity, skill verbal expression, demand high performance self and others of the team. That's more of my strengths, but I'm gonna share with you my weaknesses also. Because if I were to coach you tomorrow, you gotta know how I'm wired, okay? So nobody else would do that, but I'm gonna do that for you. So here are my key weaknesses. The first one, I get angry when under pressure or when threatened, right? I'm gonna tell you, that's how I'm, I'm wired. Is that something I'm aware of? Yes but I can focus on my strengths and build on those strengths. So here's some key profile types of Kunal, okay? Next what I have is, why am I here today? And what am I doing today, okay? Show you background history, about three months back, one of my high school friends from India came to Houston for three, four days. He's a partner at a law firm in India. He came for three, four days, I'm talking to him, you know, having dinner and drinks, and he said, you know what, let me share some pictures with you. So these pictures of these birds, he's about 41 years old, started sketching about three months back when he was 40, 41 years old. So he's never done this in his life. He comes around and starts sketching these pictures, okay? These are all hand charcoal ones. And I was like blown away. I was like, oh, wow, Mirnal. I mean, you had this talent, and this was a passion, but it was kind of put in the back burner because over the years, you want to be a partner, join a law firm, go up the ranks, you had a family to feed, bills to pay. You want to pursue your passion. But now what happened was your daughter said, hey, daddy, I'm going for these classes. Would you join me? Started doing that, and this came out. That got me thinking, what is my passion? What am I doing and what am I not doing? So what was clear was I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I left that. Sonnet guided me to be a realtor. I joined real estate. But over the years, when I'm working with clients, buyers, sellers, or builder salespeople, when I'm able to influence people, gets me excited gets me motivated. And when I saw this, I said, no, I started questioning myself, what's my passion, what's not my passion? And I actually went to my family, went to my wife, went to my mom, went to, went to my dad, asked them, what's your passion? So my mom who's sitting over here is an excellent cook, fantastic cook, all cuisines. So I asked my mom, so mom, what's your passion? She said, of course, son, you know, I love cooking. Cooking is my passion. I said, fair enough, mom. So let's just say next week, the whole family, all the grandkids and kids leave from Houston to go out of town. Would you cook and prepare all these meals? He said, hmm, actually no. I'll probably just eat bread and you know, butter or whatever. I said, there you go. Cooking is not your passion, but helping people is your passion. So my point is, once you figure out what your passion is and what your drivers are, people think, you know your passion, you gotta follow that passion to make a living. But not always. As long as you're getting a fix of your passion through doing what you're doing, you are gonna be more successful professionally and in your personal life. And that's exactly what happened with my friend. So I had an eye opener three months back. You know what? I'm passionate about influencing people. In the meantime, we had engaged with Coach Bert to coach our team. So this is back in uh, February. We had a Remax conference in Dallas. And Coach Bert was a keynote speaker over there. I saw him, engaged with him. I said, you know what? This person is really inspiring. I want to work with him. So we hired Coach Bert to coach our team, the Seth Brothers team, at the Remax office. So the last three, four months, he's been flying to Houston from Tennessee to coach 
our team, to coach the mindset of our realtors on our team, and help them be more successful. And then about a month and a half back, I said, you know, why don't I partner with him? I'm aligned with this vision, with this philosophy. I should become a coach as well. That's what happened about a month and a half back. So my philosophy went on to being you know, a driver of passion, likes one thing to the next thing, follow your passion. The last one over here I have is a few months back, Newmark Homes featured me as, as a top producer for that quarter, for that month. And what they pulled out from my profile truly is who I am. You know what, I like to influence people. I'm an immigrant from India, and I want to continue motivated by the fact everything I do has a larger, grander purpose, okay? So in this coaching session, if you're gonna engage with me or Coach Bird, the more you know about us and why we're doing this, the more you can get out of the coaching session. Does that kind of make sense? Okay, so I'm gonna switch gears. I'm gonna pull up the slides for the coaching session that Coach Bird and I'm gonna go over. Is that all right? Let me switch the slides one second. Coach Bird, you wanna come on? Let me pull up your slides, where is it at? Just a second. So Coach Bird is based in Tennessee. Okay. Um, I think you'll pick up on a southern accent once I can start. Got it, Coach. You got an accent to the Texas. <laughs> There's a clicker, Coach. Okay, great, good, good morning. Very seldom do I travel the country and a person say to me, no, I've never had that person. But most people have had a person in their life that'll have conversations with them that they may or may not want to have, right? Make them do some things they may or may not want to do, but help them become something that they didn't think they could become. I actually started as a head women's basketball coach at the second largest high school in Tennessee, which is why you see this big gaudy championship ring on my right fingers. It took me 10 years to take a place that had never won and turn it into a place that was a national championship team. That team has now won seven of the last nine state championships and been the number one team in the country. And what was interesting was mom and dad would always drop their daughters off to me at 14 and they all said the same thing. They coach my daughter's got a lot of, what do you think they said? Potential. Every now and then they said issues. <laughs> and they were right about that, right? But they would say, she just needs something. What do you think they said she needed? Coaching, discipline, structure, focus. One of the number one things they said was confidence, right? So I start coaching very early in my life and about three years into, into being a head coach, we started to win. One of the reasons we were winning is because we taught every player the seven habits of highly effective people, the principles of good and great, five dysfunctions of teams, the five disciplines of a learning organization. Imagine your daughter playing for me and learning those things at 14 years old. She was more connected, she had higher trust, she bought into me as a leader. So the more we won, people began to ask me, what are you doing with these kids? Because man, it's amazing. And I said, well, I don't have time to tell you because I'm trying to win championships. Why don't I just write a book and you can read the book, right? So I wrote this book and unbeknownst to me, it, it, it uh, was a book about coaching, but coaches weren't reading it. Guess who were reading it? Business people. And so I began to get all of these phone calls from business people real estate, brokers, home builders, mortgage companies, banks, and they all said the same thing. Coach, we have a lot of good people, and they have a lot of what? No, issues, y'all gotta pay attention here. <laughs> they got a lot of issues, Coach, and we just need something. What do you think they said what they needed? Structure. Now, I want to think about you and your sales career. Focus, discipline, structure, accountability. They needed the same things that the kids needed. So one book turned into two, two turned into three, three is now turned into 12. At 31 years old, I retired from athletic coaching and started a coaching company. This was right in the middle of 08. Yes, you may remember real estate in 08? Try to forget that, right? So the first people, so I'm out speaking, uh, and just like this, and the very first person to hire me was the largest home builder in Tennessee. And he was basically building and selling seven, 700 to 800 homes per year as an independent home builder, which is pretty big for an independent. And he saw me speak and he came to me and he said, I don't know what you got, man, but we desperately need some of it. Because we were selling 40 homes a week. 
Now we're selling four homes a week. We are projected to lose a half a million dollars, and if we just lose a half a million dollars, it will be considered a win for us. We may have to lay people off. We may end up going bankrupt. This home builder was, was worth about $50 million. He said, I'm depressed. I'm having a hard time getting out of bed in the morning. The morale of my company is completely gone down. Sales people are frustrated because they went from making $300,000 a year okay, to maybe making forty dollars or $50,000 a year, maybe sixty. dollars He said, we need some help. So I began to go in there and coach this big home builder. Coach him personally. Sometimes I had to go to his house and get him out of bed in the morning. And I said, here's the deal. You're going to be the first one to show up, and you're going to be the last one to leave every day. I said, we're not quitting. We're not going bankrupt. We're not giving in. And we're going to show these salespeople how to sell, how to get people in these model homes. And we're going to do so many strategies to keep these model homes going. So that year, they had projected to sell 280 homes. We sold almost 400 homes that year, which got the attention of other top home builders. And so other top home builders in the country began saying, who is this guy? Who's this coach? And how can we hire him, right? So I begin to go in and learn how do you build subdivisions, how do you market, how do you sell, how do you get people in the homes, right? And when we did that, guess who else began to hire me? Real estate teams around the country, mortgage companies around the country, insurance companies around the country, anybody who's interested in growth. Everybody with me? But I'm coaching companies and, I, and, and some individuals begin to come to me, real estate agents begin to come to me and say, how do we get coached by you? Because I understand you only coach companies. I said, well, I don't have anything right now, but let me build something. So I begin to build out this program called Monster Producer. Now, let me give you my belief statement, because Kanal and I are on the same page, 100% on this. I believe a monster producer is a legendary creature that combines multiple skills to dominate a market. Does that sound like some of you in this room? Yes or no? That was very uncompelling. <laughs> is uncompelling a word? We use it in Tennessee. Hey, here's the deal. I attract a certain type of person. I do not attract people that are interested in mediocrity. I do not attract people that are lazy. I attract people who want to be the best. I attract people that want to grow significantly. So I've coached real estate agents into going from 35 deals a year to 105, to 110. I've coached agents doing 200 transactions a year. Okay, right now I'm on tour for Remax, doing 35 major events around the country for Remax uh, at all their super sales rallies, coaching some of them. Now, isn't this interesting? I don't sell real estate, but I'm coaching the top real estate agents in the country. I don't sell mortgages, but I'm coaching a $142 million mortgage producer right now. I don't sell financial investments, but I'm coaching some top financial investments in the country. And why is that? Because I don't drink the Kool-Aid. I don't tell you the same things other sales trainers are going to tell you. I don't tell you to make 100 calls a week just for the sake of calling people. I come at this from a totally different angle. And so as we begin to grow Monster Producer, we begin to expand into different markets. We now have over 600 people in this coaching program all around the country and we're opening up new markets and one of those new markets is Sugarland because Kunal is in our coaching program and he what did he say his passion was coaching coaching people to a higher level of performance now so when you're thinking about this here's some of my belief statements now what if I told you remember when he started the session today by saying what do you do for a living do you know how many people bomb that question when you ask them what they do for a living, most people get nervous. They look down to the left and start sweating. You ever played that game before? <laughs> yeah? And so here, here, here's our philosophy. People do business with other people that believe the same things they do. Everybody, how many people agree with that? People do business with other people that believe the same things they do. So one of the first things we, we are going to coach you on is how to explain your services in a world-class way so that you will literally know in 15 seconds if you have a legitimate prospect or not would you rather know in 15 seconds or chase somebody for 15 months how many of you chase somebody for 15 months only for them to be a complete disaster as one of your clients <laughs> you get that little competitive spirit that you got going you're like i'm gonna get them i'm gonna get them you only got them i wish what i wish i could get rid of them okay listen any, anything that feels chase runs number one but here's the deal. I got to teach you. Let's say I, let's say you're in a you're, you're in a home. That home that builder has a set of beliefs. Here's what we believe. Here's one of my one of my beliefs. I believe every person deserves the right to have a professional represent them when they buy, sell, build, or finance real estate. How many of you believe that? Because how many people turn over their real estate to someone who's not a professional, only to have an enormous emotional tax on them, cost them a lot of money and a lot of time? How many people see that before? 
So one of the things I say is, look, Mike, you deserve a professional to represent you when you buy, sell, build, or finance real estate. Mm -hmm. I also believe there's a difference between a house and a home. A house is made up of sticks and bricks, and a home is made up of memories. You see the difference? Now, is that a whole lot better than saying, I'm a realtor? Or we sell homes, or we build houses. So one of the things we coach people in this program in is how to explain your services. Now, when you learn how to explain your services, what happens? What does it do to your confidence? Increases. Does your confidence go up, yes or no? Yes. And when you have confidence, is it attractive? Yes. Yes. If you guys saw my wife, you'd be like, how in the world did he get her? <laughs> you know how I got my wife's confidence? It wasn't because of my looks, but it was because of my confidence. My wife said, you're going somewhere. I want to go with you, right? So, and you know where I picked up my wife? One of my workshops. She came to a workshop on, on my book, This Ain't No Practice Life. And I tell people she fell in love with her potential and I fell in love with her. Now, confidence is incredibly attractive to the market, but do you know how many salespeople don't have it? And when you don't have confidence, guess what you won't do? Yeah, guess what you will not do that you need to do? You won't make outbound phone calls. You won't follow up like you're supposed to. You won't even go to things that you're nervous about going to. Insecure people always contract and retreat. Confident people always push through. So here's some stats you need to remember about real estate. Less than 9% of people remember their real estate agent's name after the transaction is over. 90% of people do a real estate transaction and don't even remember the name of the agent. Okay, it was so impactful, I forgot who you were. Think about that. 67% of people use the very first real estate agent that contacts them. Every transaction you do should be worth 5.7 referrals over the lifetime of the customer. But 98% of agents never call a customer back once they put them in a home. If we just got better at those things in this coaching program, would you make a lot more money? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. So coaching those big home builders, I begin to see, we got, here's where we got problems. We don't follow up like we should seven to 15 touches. We don't know how to overcome objections. We don't follow up once we put a person in a home. You know, we're losing a lot of money here. And if we just pick up these things, we're gonna make a lot more money. So I always share with you what I believe. I believe trained people always outperform untrained people. Would you agree with that? Yes. I, I had dinner last night with Johnny Caraba. You guys know Johnny Caraba? He founded Caraba's restaurant. And he and I had dinner together and we're talking about this because he, he you know, Caraba's became a national chain. He's got multiple restaurants. And I, he took me on a tour through the restaurant. Listen, I could tell those people were very well trained. It wasn't like he was talking like they were well trained. They were well trained. You know why I knew that? Because I experienced it. I experienced it. It was so good. I said, I'm going to bring my whole team here and let them have dinner here so they can see how well your people are trained, how good the customer service is here, right? Well, what happens is a lot of real estate agents are not trained. And when they are trained, it's very random and it's very sporadic, okay? So what we're going to be coaching you on is a system, a system. Our average rate of return for the people we're coaching is 43%. So that means in a one-year cycle, our goal is to take whatever you're currently doing and improve it by 43%. Does that make sense? That's a bold claim, and I can only make that claim because of the number of people I've done it with. Okay? So, so, so what do we coach people? So here's what we believe. Train people out before untrained people. A good coach can change your life. I believe that. I believe coaching is not going to a class, and it's not something you did. Like I went to a class for credit. It's something you do. And it's something you do every day. So I train people in my office every morning at 8.30. Every day we train on something. Even if it's for 15 minutes. You know why? The military trains every day. Olympians train every day. Do you think top real estate agents train every day? Yes or no? Yes. They're doing a form of training every single day. So I think we all have missing structures. I'm going to let you all talk about these. Because when I look at your business as a coach, what I'm looking for is a missing structure. And a missing structure is a void or a gap that if we just helped you in that area, you would get a bump or lift in your business. Now, why can't you see your own missing structures? Why can't you see them? You're not tracking it. Okay, say that. You're not tracking it. You're not tracking it. Here's my saying. You can't see the picture when you're inside the frame. So how many of you have ever gone to a restaurant and you can very quickly figure out what their problems are? Right? Like nobody greeted me at the door. Took too long to get some water. Nobody, right? Why? But you're not in the restaurant business. How can you see that? Why can't they see it? Carpets haven't been cleaned. Place is not right. You can pick it up quickly. Well, what I have trained myself to do is over the last 10 to 12 years is look at your business and go, man, uh, you, you got 90% of this figured out. You really do. What you're doing is good. You don't need a coach because something's wrong. 
You got to get out of your brain that people only turn to coaches when everything's going wrong. The top people in the world have coaches because they want to go to a higher level. Does, does that make sense? So if you're doing 40 deals a year or 50 deals a year or 10 deals a year, you may say, I know I want to get to that level, but I don't know how to do it. You know it's possible because why? Somebody else is doing it. So a good coach will come in and find and fill your missing structure. So talk to them about the most common missing structures that we're going to coach them on. Absolutely. So before we talk about that, when coach said, you know, what's missing for you to be able to coach, not coach, a lot of us depend on external factors to come and influence us and get us to be coached. As an example, there are a lot of builder salespeople over here, right? So Taylor Morris and Newmark, a lot of builders over here. So you could say, you know what, my management team needs to send me for a coaching program or training program to get better. I could make the same argument today. The Seth Brothers team to get better, I got to depend on Manesh Patel and Nimesh Patel to send me for a coaching program, training program. When you are wired to be successful, you prospect learning opportunities. It's as simple as that. Coach Burt was in Dallas a few months back amongst um, between four or 5,000 Remax agents from the state of Texas, right? And today, he's partnered with one in the Houston market. Why? The man shouldn't come and say, go, go partner with him. I had to go prospect him and say, you know what? I see value in him. So I'll give you an example. Who recently has bought a car? Anyone? You bought a car? And when did you buy that car? March. In March. Before you, whatever car you bought, were you seeing more of those cars on the road? Mm -hmm. Right? So we are programmed to tune out things that aren't important to us. Our brain works very, very systematically. And when you say you're going to buy a specific car, those cars start popping up, start popping up, start popping up. Same thing, we are in learning mode where someone has to tell us, start learning, read the book, teach yourself. But if you're learning mode 24 seven, no matter where you are at, you take every opportunity to learn and get better, right? That's what Coach Bird does. He has a structured way of, of sharing the knowledge and expertise for all these topics. One of them, EOS, selling system, follow-up, referral system, your person of interest, and personal power influence. So EOS, which is the clinical services, our team's philosophy from day one since 14 has been, what's the value of the Seth Brothers team? We do not have the clarity in the terminology, but from day one we would say, if cost is a concern, then there's lack of value. The REMAX agents in this room and our team, we have a choice. We can hang our lives in the REMAX fine properties, or we can go somewhere else. Is that correct? Now, the cost of doing business with Manesh Patel, Nimesh Patel, REMAX, there is a chunk of change paid over there. But we see the value in Manesh, Nimesh, and the REMAX balloon behind us. So cost is not a concern, because there's excellent value in that. Same thing, what we're talking about EOS, we would say, what's the value for clients to work with us? I'll give you a very good example. Just yesterday, I was working with a new client. He calls me up, hey, I'm looking to buy a home with one of our builder partners in Riverstone, and I want to get half of the commission back. So we own 3% commission, I want 1.5% commission back. I had a phone conversation, I said, you know what, why don't you come to the office, and I can engage, we talk to you. He came to this office with his wife and, and kid, and met with him for about an hour. In that session, I did not tell him, use me, or I want to be a realtor. I figured out what his objections were. He said, well, I have a lease to break. It's going to take six, eight months. That expense is there. I'm thinking about this floor plan, that floor plan, this elevation, this builder. And you know what? I've been looking for a home for the last two weeks. Normally, it should take much longer. So he kept talking and talking for 20, 30 minutes. I listened to him. Listen to him. <laughs> then I said, what I heard from you, buyer, you have one, two, three objections. Is that correct? Now, of these three objections, Here's how I'm going to handle your first objection, second objection, third objection. And one of them was how I'm on a commission, our team will earn on that transaction. So long story short, that client left the room, you know what, I'm going to come back to you by the end of the day today, if I want to work with you or not. I said, hey, if you want to work with me, you have two choices. You want half my commission, you know, this was a free consultation for you, and I removed a lot of objections for you, brought clarity to the home purchase process. But if you want to work with me and get a discount, this will be the first and last meeting, I'll give you my license number. But I've demonstrated to you this is a complicated process. First time home buyer. And if you don't have clarity, you may stumble along. So forget about dollar amount, that's one number here, but there are other potential issues. Within 35 minutes, I got a call from him, you know what, I want to work with you. And last night, almost like 11.30 p.m., we signed a contract for a half a million dollar. With how much commission given back? Zero dollars. Now why did that happen? Because my approach was, I got to bring him to the office, Demonstrate the value, which is EOS. If I do that effectively, I or my team earns more money. 
So when you're in the market and you build a sales office or as a realtor, when people come to you, what do you do for a living? If you just say what everyone says, do you think you're gonna get business? No. I'll give you another example. About a year back in this room, we had every month the National and Nimesh do a Remax Fan Properties monthly meeting. And we had a luxury home builder, Christopher Sims, who came for a presentation over here. He has these luxury townhomes, you know, 800 to $1.2 million in a Sugarland area. Did the presentation, they made the whole office meeting. When the meeting ended, I went straight to him. I said, hey, Chris. Spoke to him about 60 seconds or so. You know, engage with him. Say, you know what, I, this is what I can do for you. Do you have 10 minutes for me? He came to me. We went to our office, sat down for the next 20, 30 minutes with us on. Let's go. This was Tuesday. We met again on Thursday morning at his office. On Friday, he signed six listing agreements from price range from $800,000 to 1.2. The five to $6 million of business I got, or a team got, based on international confidence I had to talk to them. So my name tag was here. I didn't have to say I'm a realtor, but I had to demonstrate to him what my belief system was that applies to my team and how we can help him get results. And that builder has been in the market for many, many years. And he said to me, I came to your office, there were 100 plus agents in this very room. But nobody had the confidence or the courage to come up and ask for business. And Coach Bird says, if you don't have it, what are you going to lose? Right? All he can say is, thank you, but no thank you, step brother, not interested. But with the confidence that I went, the script that I had, what I said, God us those listings. Does that kind of make sense to you? So I want some volunteers over here. If anyone wants to share, what do you do for a living? Anyone? You want me to call you guys out? Mike? You've been coached yeah. by Coach Bird, so it's not fair. Is that all right? Maybe I'll have you go in the end to show us how it's done correctly. Ed, is it okay if I call you out? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not the... Uh, That's okay. So Ed Mercado, let me tell you who Ed Mercado is. He's a salesperson with Taylor Morris in Riverson community. Two years back, he won GHBA, Salesperson of the Year Award. And the transaction I was talking about, 11.30 at night, was with Ed Mercado. So Ed, what do you do for a living? Uh, I facilitate the home buying process for Fantastic. homeowners. Fantastic. Yeah. Anyone else who can do better than that? I help people buy the right home. You help people buy the right home. Fantastic. So let's just say I had Coach Bird over here with a suitcase of cash, half a million dollars. Who wants his business today? He's looking to buy a home in Houston. Lisa? Eh? Who else? Lisa? What would you say to him? What do you do for a living? Come to me. Yeah. Come to me. <laughs> Coach Bird? Go to Lisa. Yeah. I just take care of the way people want to live. Sorry, say one more time. I take care of the way people want to You take care of how you... How did it? Anyone else wants his business? I help people create a positive, exciting experience. Fantastic. So you want one of you. So what do you do for a living? I help people build their dreams. Help you build dreams? Yes. Fantastic. Anyone else wants to take a stab at that? And coach, you're going to evaluate who's going to get your business. Is that fair? <laughs> Maybe a free coaching seminar for you. Yes. Okay? That's actually the test. The person who has the best pitch to him will enroll him for a free coaching session. Okay? Anyone else wants to take a stab at that? How about for you? I've been coached by Coach Seth. Okay, so that's right. <laughs> you have unfair advantage. <laughs> I, can, I can answer that. Manesh, do you mind if I call you out? Sure. What do you do for a living? Elite, trade, inspire, motivate, attract the most successful builders in the country I've ever seen. Why? Because I enjoy doing it. Because? Because I enjoy inspiring and building and coming. Fantastic. Cindy, you are in the lending business. What would you say? What do you do for a living? Fantastic. Hypothetically, Brett was also a loan officer, right? What you said, do you think that was something that you did? Yeah? So you do? And the salespeople who said what they do, yes, you all had similar scripts, but it was almost all aligned, right? Yeah. There was nothing that stood out to me. Coach, did anything sound out to you? All right, so let me, let me, let me make this statement. You want to go? Come on, Monica. I'm a believer in building the dream okay. for the okay all right now let me let me let me just give one thing all of those were, were good but what if I said every one of you told me what you what you do because we ask you it's a trick it's the biggest commodity trap in the world what do you do for a living but people don't buy what you do they buy why you do it People do business with other people that believe the same things they do. 
So when you lead with what you do, I help people find their dream home, I facilitate this, I do this, that doesn't, that doesn't give me a, a reason to line up with you. You're right. What I'm looking for is tell me what you believe. Remember when I was using an example a minute ago, I believe, I believe the home buying process can be complicated and stressful. Because of that belief, here's what I do. You see what I'm saying? So, so when you line up with other people, you line up with them because you both believe the same things. Okay, so what we do in that question is we teach you to back up and say, before I tell you what I do, let me tell you what I believe. Now, that's how I know within 15 seconds if I have a legitimate prospect. If I say I believe every person on planet Earth needs a coach, and you sit there and look at me like, no. Oh. <laughs> I'm already pretty good. I mean, why would I do that? <laughs> then I know pretty quickly you and I are probably not going to do business with each other. Do you know that, just as a, sta as a statement, when I said earlier I believe every person needs a good coach in their life, and I ask you, have you had a good coach, do you know that the people that raise their hands have the highest probability of buying my books, the highest probability of joining my coaching programs, because we fundamentally believe the same things. Does that make sense? The reason Johnny Caraba and I hit it off so well is because he used to be a football coach. And he believes in coaching and the power of coaching. So we immediately had a relationship. So, so the last thing he said is you and I are going to do business with each other. I don't know how it's going to be, but we believe the same things. Everybody understand? So we teach people in the program how to explain. Like when you're in front of a prospect, and, and you know, let's take, let's take you know Taylor Morrison. And Taylor Morrison, we believe this because of these beliefs. Here's what we do. Here's how we do it different than every other home builder. Here's here's all the people we're doing it for, and look at how successful this is. If we can do this for you, like we've done it for all these other people, what would stop us from moving forward with each other? Now, is that a lot better than just leading with what I do? What if you ask me what I do for a living, and I said I'm a coach? Does that really tell you anything about me? When I'm on airplanes, if I don't want to talk to people and they ask me what I do, I go, oh, I'm a life coach. That's the end conversation. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not really a life coach. I'm really a business and entrepreneurial coach, but if I don't want to talk, that's what I say. Now, if I do want to talk, I say, before I tell you what I do, let me tell you what I believe. I believe every person in the world needs a good coach in their life. A person who I have conversations with and they may or may not want to have. Make them do some things they may or may not want to do, but become something they didn't think they could become. Have you ever had a good coach? And I know immediately the people that go, oh, yeah. So you know the power of a good coach in your life, don't you? That's what I do. Because of my beliefs, I have spent my lifetime coaching other people to much higher levels of performance. Then typically we have a conversation. And here's how I know if it's a good conversation. They reach in their pocket and they give me their business card and they say, I would like to follow up with you. Does that make sense? It's not the other way around where I'm reaching in my pocket going here. Take my business, take my car, because I can sell you a house at some point in the future. You understand what I'm saying? So this is so critical because it changes how you explain. Now, do you think this would impact your close ratio? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. You think it could compress the sales cycle? Yes or no? Yes. See, when you line up with somebody you believe, like, I'm in. I've spoken in places where people walked up to me and said, I don't even know what I'm buying, but I'm in. Just sign me up. Why? When you look at the numbers, out of every 30 people you get in front of, there will be 4.8 that line up with what you believe. Everybody with me? For every person you talk to, 4.8 will be immediate. They're called innovators or early adopters. That means the minute you share with it, they believe the same things you do, let's go. Some people have to see it one to three times. Some people have to see it three to seven times. Some people have to see it seven to 15 times. So, so when you're thinking about your sales cycle, these are the areas we coach people on. And let me tell you why we coach people on these areas. Because over the last 10 to 15 years, by coaching thousands of people, what I've found is that this is the area they struggle in. They struggle in how they explain their services. They struggle in how they generate leads. That's why we need a selling system. Everybody see that? They struggle in how they follow up. Okay, real estate agents, this is where I have to give you a gentle scolding. Most agents follow up how many touches in the follow up? One to two. You know what every stat in America says, every stat in the world says? Seven to 15 touches, 80% of the time to convert a prospect to a buyer. Coach, let me share a success yes, story with that. Going back to legacy selling system, about two months back, Coach Bird came to Houston to coach our team. It was a kind of morning coaching session for about an hour or two. In the coaching session, he kind of unfolded certain strategies 
how do you engage with potential buyers, okay? That same afternoon, one of our buyer's agents on our team was prospecting with client and showing them homes in the 700 to 800,000 price range inside the loop. And our team member showed the whole home. They love it, love it, love it, the, fam the husband and wife. In the end, my team member and buyer gets to the garage and they see the laundry set up in the garage. The body line is <laughs> like, oh. And you know, all negative. So my team member takes a step back, takes a deep breath, and spits out exactly what he got coached that morning coach board. He said, I understand this is an objection of not having a laundry room inside the home. But if I was to put a number, does the home meet your 50% requirements, 60%, 80%, where are you at? Husband says, you know what, actually, more like 90%. The wife says, no, honey, more 98%, right? Our team will take a step back, takes a deep breath, and spits out next strategy that he learned that morning. And guess what happened? The buyers move forward, they wrote a contract, and they bought the home, potential commission, $22,000, $23,000. Now, could they have a bought a home? If not that, another one? They would have. Our team had a buyer up with that client. We were not gonna lose that client. But what's money for us? Time. If I can close a deal today, I can focus on the client. Guess what happened over there? The coaching that Coach Bird gave that same day, applied, results came in. So when we engaged with Coach Bird back in Jan or February, it came out a big price tag, you know, which we paid, not Remax, not Manesh Patel, not Manesh Patel. We said, you know what, I'm gonna invest X dollars in this coaching program, he's gonna coach my team, results will come. And we've got not one, not two, multiple contracts written based on coaching that he brought in. So my philosophy was, or our philosophy was, Cost is a concern and there's a lack of value. But people want to see the results first and then engage with coach, trainer, whatever it may be. But let's just say any of you over here, let's just say Monica Raimundo, you got a job, you got an opportunity to work in a Bollywood, oh, no, Bollywood, not from India, sorry, Hollywood movie. <laughs> and said, Monica, you got to get fit and trimmed and get on the movie scale, okay? Would you hire a personal trainer? Yeah. Yeah? Because you want quick results. If you do it on your own, results will come on it because you're a dedicated person, but it would take longer. So it's up to you. When I sales people as realtors, everyone wants results. So it's up to you. Do you get engaged and get focused in a short period of time, or you take longer? As simple as that. Yeah. So that's a selling system yeah. that coach, coaches us on. I mean, I'll give you one example. Million dollar follow-up, coach's philosophy is you gotta dedicate every day, two hours, whether it's a morning or evening, pick your time, and have the follow-up system. So as a team, we incorporated that every morning, a buyer's agent would do uh, prospecting and phone call and certain time block. So like Coach said, you know, you, want to, you, you don't want to be scolded, but that's what happened. About a week, 10 days back, one of our team members, you know, this is a, this is a prospecting time, and, and the team member were busy responding to emails or responding to listing that the buyer asked for. I said, hey, time out, stop. Is this a new business or is it an old business? I said, old. I said, then get off that email, get off that phone call, and prospect new. I said, but Kunal, I got it. I said, no. Nope. Discipline yourself, make the phone calls. So a team member stopped what he was doing, started making phone calls. He prospected a client who had called our team about three weeks back or four weeks back for a rental listing to lease a home. Our team member prospecting them, got in touch with them. Within a month, within a month, the same client bought a $600,000 home, new construction home in Riverstone. Went from being a tenant applicant to be a home buyer. Now if the team member had done what he was doing, you know what, I gotta respond to this email, a question on contract, because I gotta do it, will you prospect? No. So, this, so the minute all follow ups discipline, every morning, every afternoon, you gotta block that time, no exceptions. Even if you're in the builder world, do you have prospects that you have? Yes, you do. You have contracts to follow up? Yes, you do. But the discipline is what makes you successful. So those are two examples. Coach, you want to continue? Yeah, look at that follow-up. So how much money do you think we're losing in our follow-up by not going 7 to 15 touches? So that's one problem, which one of the reasons I wrote the book Million Dollar Follow-Up is because I watched how people followed up and I, and I watched how people follow up with me because I'm a real estate investor. So I buy and sell millions of dollars of real estate, whether it be, com whether it be commercial, short-term, long-term, uh, different types, and I watched how agents followed up with me when I was interested. And here was the problem, they didn't, right? 
They didn't follow up. Or they called me one time and they quit and I never heard from them again. But here was the real problem. So many of them didn't go the number of touches they should to keep my attention. Because I could want something. Like, 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 like when I go to an area and I really like it, I want to purchase something there. But when I leave that area, all of that energy goes away. So when I leave Houston and Sugar Land, I go back to Tennessee, maybe I wanted something here, but if the salesperson doesn't keep my attention, something else gets my attention. So we're really day trading for attention. You understand? So the first problem is most people don't go seven to 15 touches. How many people could say, I'm guilty of that one? Remember, all progress starts by telling the truth, okay? So the first problem is we don't go seven touches, and because of that, we're really not in the game long enough. And I coach like a top karate guy in the world, and I asked him, I'm like, do you guys get, get, you know, get in there and just look at each other? He's like, no, man. We get in there and go back and forth. That's what selling is. Selling is going back and forth and staying in the game, overcoming objection, right? And hanging in there with people. But the second problem with follow-up is how people follow up. So here's things you never need to do in the follow-up. Hey, I'm just checking in. <laughs> here's another one that's even worse. Do you have any questions? Well, how many of you are right? Hey, I've I, I had people say this to me. Uh, you were on my list of people to call back today. Oh, oh hey, I feel so supported. Thank you. Okay, here's, here's, here's the creepiest one I ever heard. Hey, I woke up thinking about you today. I'm like, did you dream about me too? Because that's creepy, man. Right, you everybody see what I'm saying? This is how I even follow up. Hey, just checking in, just touching base, just see if you have any questions. Just want to know if you're ready to go. None of these are correct ways to follow up. A follow-up should do one thing, rekindle the energy and take them back to show them that you can solve the problem better than anybody else. Hey, you told me you hated the house you lived in? Okay, I'm bringing you exactly what you said you wanted on a silver platter. What's stopping you from moving forward? I take them back to the problem. Remember how you told me you hated that small bedroom or that master bathroom? And I want you to understand, I want you to start using terms like this. It seems like. It seems like is a phrase that gets people talking. <coughs> Seems like you want to do this, but you're stuck on one thing. All right. Do you want to share an objection yesterday that I had? Yes. So yesterday when I was working with the same client who wrote the contract with Ed, so he says, you know what, I'm going to buy this home on this lot, but I know Taylor Morris is going to release some more lots in the next four, six months, and maybe I should wait for the next time. And I said to him, you know what, I'm unbiased over here. If you talk to the salesperson, they will say, no, nope, buy it today. Because you never know, and maybe not in that community, wherever he may be. So he's going to push you to buy today. But let me tell you from unbiased opinion, his wife's sitting over there, two-month pregnant baby due in November. Okay? I said, the section we're talking about today is over here. If you don't take this opportunity, there will be more sections coming up. But do you want to live in a section where you're the first homeowner with all the trucks running around with lack of safety and security, or be in a section or a street where people are only living in, and you just moved from this city to that city, and being here, you have another daughter who's seven years old, do you want to wait for the time and move into a home and then find out who the neighbors are, or move now? Now, that was an emotional punch I gave him. Do I look at me? Yeah. Looks at his husband, we bang on home, and we bang on that car. Right? That was an objection. But I had to work on the emotion of the person, make them realize. You can wait, and then he asked me, well, what about prices? Well, historically speaking, Houston, the prices tend to go up or stay the same. They don't normally drop. But more than that, the builder may give you better incentive at the same end of the year, but then you prolong your time frame to buy the home. Somehow it came back to them. That's how the selling system works. You engage with them. So on, on our team, on a daily basis, guess what we do? We do role playing. We engage with each other. We talk about, hey, you did an open house? What were the interaction you had? What were the objections? And as a team, we sit down and discuss how we should effectively handle those objections. So as salespeople, as realtors, no matter what you do for a living, if you become an expert in handling objections, why would business, business not come to you? It would come automatically. Does that make sense? So, so you see, in the follow-up, the, the problem is the methodology. And most agents have not been coached in how to overcome objection. And objection is opposition of thought. Right? And, and here's what I tell people. I'm not fighting with you. I'm fighting with your feelings. Because it seems like you want to do it, but you're stuck on this one thing. And I break everything down into simple terms. You can live in this house for 80 more dollars a month. 8 times 12, 960 more dollars a year. Now you told me, remember how much you didn't like the current house or the subdivision or the crazy neighbor or the yard. Now I'm giving you the opportunity. I'm, notice how the words I use. I'm giving you the opportunity to have exactly what you wanted for less than a thousand more dollars a year. 
Everybody understand? So these coaching points, ultimately what they should do for you if you're in a coaching program is make you a lot more money because you're getting better and better and better. Just, just the one concept of what it seems like. When a person hesitates on you, say it seems like you want to do this, but there's one thing about this house you don't like. Is that right? It looks like you like 90% of this house, but you don't like the front yard or you don't like that. That's right. Well, if I could show you a house just like this, right down the street that I've got, that has the yard you're looking for, you would take action on it, wouldn't you? See, these are things that you need to be coached on. So what we're doing is we're coaching you on these things. Now, I'll, I'll do one more, and then we're gonna then we're gonna kind of overview what the coaching program is, because the reason I use that number 5.7 referrals is the National Association of Realtors says that every transaction you do should be worth 5.7 referrals over the lifetime of the consumer. Now, I believe that 83% of all staffs are completely made up, okay? <laughs> but having said that, how many of you believe that if you do it right, you should get three to six referrals over the lifetime of the consumer? Average person's going to buy four to six houses over their lifetime. They got friends. If you do it right and get them to a much better state in their life, they're going to go tell other people. So what I want to show you is how to build a, like a jam-packed referral-based business where you really do it right. But go back to that stat. 98% of agents never do what? They never follow up after the sale. So how should you follow up? Day of, two days after, two weeks after, two months after. And you should have a, a consistent way that you get high touch and high frequency. So you're seeing each other. You're rekindling that energy. Oh, you were really good because you could be really good, but I can still forget about it. How many of y'all thought something that was incredibly good only to forget about it in a very short period of time, right? So the follow up is like reminding you, hey, this was a great experience, right? This was a great experience. So we actually coach you how to get those 5.7 referrals. Now, if we just did those top four things, show you how to explain your services, uh, teach you how to work a selling system to generate more leads, because everybody's looking for more leads, yes or no? Everybody is, okay? Here's the worst thing about that I noticed when I worked the big home builders. Most of the agents waited on things to happen. That means they sit in the model and they wait on people to walk in. They wait on the phone to ring. One of my core philosophies in life is to never allow another person to stand between you and your destiny. You see how powerful that is? I'm never going to leave my financial future up to anybody else outside of me. Because what if the builder walks in one day and says, I'm cutting off, I'm, I'm cutting off all that marketing advertising. Now what are you going to do? See, I want to take what the builder gives me as a bonus and say thank you for generating leads. Thank you for spending all that money. I'll take all these leads. But, but what if the builder walks in one day and says, I can't spend all this money on marketing advertising? Which is exactly what happened in 08. Now the agents are sitting in the, in the models going, what are we gonna do? <laughs> like, where are we gonna get people? Well, there's 7.5 billion people on planet Earth. Probably a few on Mars we can sell a house to, okay? <laughs> but here's the deal. It's not going to, you're not going to sell anything when you go there and sit there like this, wait on something to happen. Do you know that I walked through model homes before I started coaching those builders? And you know what the salespeople did? One of them watched the fishing channel the whole time I was in the model. <laughs> One of them watched Sports Center the whole time I was in the model. They did never got up, not even to walk me through the house and go, here's the bathroom. <laughs> they just said, look through the house. If you're interested, let me know. And I'm like, this, this, is, this is how you sell people? Like I told the builder, and the builder almost had a complete breakdown. I said, these are the salespeople your future is depending on. They're watching the fishing channel and ESPN versus trying to sell this property. Selling is about emotions. Selling is about, let me show you how great this subdivision is. Selling is because this is the hottest thing in the world. You gotta be part of this, you understand what I'm saying? That's selling, it's getting people excited. It's not, it's not saying walk through the house and if you like anything, come back and see me. <laughs> You follow what I'm saying here? And this was the number one home builder in Tennessee. 777 homes. So in a good economy, people are going to purchase and buy. But when that slows down, and it will slow down, there comes a time when winter asks what you did all spring and summer. And agents who are not prepared, who have not been working a selling system, who are not generating leads, wake up one day and go, where's all the leads at? Because they just, like this. Coach, let me share something. Yes, so please. Earlier last year, what happened in Houston? Harvey, yes, right? Not just in our office, in our industry, a lot of realtors had to slow down. You know what? And blaming Harvey, weather conditions, 
you know what, how much can I go out, everything shut down. Teams and agents who have a system and a system of doing things did better than any, anyone else, including our team. We had a growth of almost 32% in 17 versus 16, in spite of Harvey, because we had a selling system, we had a follow-up system, and we were doing what you should be doing, doesn't matter what the variables are, because you want to be controlled as realtors, as salespeople. What are we guys? Commission-based making, that's how we make money. If, if Harvey happens, whatever happens, if you not have the mindset of prospecting for lead, or prospecting your partnership, then you're allowing somebody else, external factors, to determine your paycheck. How can you allow that to happen? But does that happen? Happens around us all the time. Yeah, yeah and it's your future. Who's gonna, who's gonna be in charge of your future except you? You understand what I'm saying? So then we get into how do you become a person of interest and a, and a, and a person of power and influence. This is what we coach people on. This is how we're getting agents. So, so I want you to look at this one cycle. This is your selling cycle. This is from start to finish the entire sales cycle. And because I'm a former coach, I break everything down into parts. Okay, because that's how we would teach the players. We teach them the whole offense, then we break it down into one part. And we would work on that one part until we mastered it. And one of the things, so look at, look at the very, it starts by creating opportunity, those are leads. So remember this, money changes hands when problems are solved. The bigger the problem, the more money people pay to solve it. Okay, now let me give you an example. The average sell price in your market today is what? Give me an example. Does anybody, doesn't matter. What? 350. What? 350, 450, the average sell price in Seaside, Florida, right now is 1.7 million. Are they solving the same problem as you? Yes or no? They're still helping a person buy a house. They could sell four house. They could sell twelve houses down there and make four hundred thousand bucks. In my market, it's like two seventy nine where I live outside of Nashville. You follow what I'm saying? So how many houses do you have to sell two seventy nine to make that money versus sell twelve in Seaside, Florida? It's still solving a problem. So real estate agents are in the business of solving problems. Don't like my current house. Just had a baby. Just went through a divorce. Don't have the money. Want to upgrade? Want to downgrade? Once I have a problem, I'm going to go to the one person I think can solve it better than anybody else. Now, the problem in this room is, is how many agents are in this area? How many options does a person have to solve that problem? Here's another problem is that 67% of people use the very first agent that contacts them. They don't use the best one. They use the first one. So we're really competing for a lot of space. So a lot of people just don't have enough leads, which is where the selling system comes in. Everybody with me? Then establish rapport. Can I trust you? Share your explanation of service. Some people are not good at that. So, so what happens is they lose a lot of sales because they can't do discovery and articulate. Like this is how I did this one. I work right for you. Look at that seven touch follow up. If you've not been coached in how to overcome objection, you're losing a lot of money. Because when people do give you objection, which looks like what? Got to sleep on it, got to think about it, got to talk to my husband about it, got to talk to my wife about it, got to pray about it, don't feel peace about it, time is not right. Okay? I had somebody the other day say, I, I, I need to medicate on it. That was a big one on me. Okay? <laughs> Coach, let me share one thing. So about two weeks back, one of my team members working with a client, and he was a cultural buyer. He says, you know what? I'll get a sign from God, and when God tells me, then I'll buy a home. Right? That happened with you or Michael or one of you guys, right? What was the exact word? What did he say? He said, I, I believe in karma. I believe in karma. And when karma or God shows me, then I will buy the home, right? So that was an objection and, and the team member had a rebuttal, whatever he said. Then in the coaching session, he brought up that objection. Hey, what should I have said? Then that objection thrown at me. So I said, so you're saying it's a cultural buyer, which country? He said, India. I said, okay, you should have said, when he came to America, did God stamp the visa on your passport? The answer is no. You put effort and then you reached America. I'm your tool to get you to the finish line. Yes, I believe in karma too and blah, 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 blah. At the same time, you have to have directive, intentional steps to get to that point. Now, with that objection, interaction, could that have got a team member potentially successful breakthrough? In my opinion, potentially, yes. But when that objection was thrown at my team, I said, God, karma, you know what, how do I handle that? <laughs> White flag, I'm out of here, next, right? No, results may be the same, 
But then when you become an expert, going back to objection, handling objections, how do you do that? Now all the builders, salespeople over here, how many times do you guys sit with your coworkers and brainstorm in a group setting about objections going at you? How many have done that? Show me hands. So you're not build a sales world, but you are a coach. Yes, you do set. Marshall, you raise your hand. You guys do that? Usually when we go to like out to lunch. So you mean, you mean a Meritage sales team or just you and Sheila? Well, me and Sheila, when we're in the sales office, the customer does bring up something that you know, we'll afterwards we'll talk about. Fantastic. So what you're saying is your company may not be empowering you with pre-planned you know, session, but you and a business partner. So like Monica may be doing it with men, right? You do it with Sheila. But as a company, there are a lot of sales managers over here. Are you putting those tools in the pocket of your sales team? The answer is no. That's what we do. We sit in a circle. Okay, talk and tell me. What objection was thrown at you? Well, here's what you could have said. And in that session, we can become experts. Because when you're bouncing off each other, your business partner, maybe Sheila has an answer for you, but maybe somebody else. Michelle B, where are you at? You're with Meritage. Maybe she has an experience of similar objection. Because you know what? Marshall actually could have said that. So again, you should not be waiting for your management to create an environment. If you think it's important, create your own circle. Find your own people. And why would you Meritage? Go across the street. Go to other builders. Hey, guys, we're in the same business. How do we happen in Riverstone, in the Sugarland area? What things are we throwing at you? What things, some things being thrown at Taylor Morrison or Darling Home? How are we handle those objections? Right? Is that is that expert opinion? Yes. That kind of makes sense. So, so think of it this: one of the biggest challenges for the real estate agent is they don't see themselves as a small business owner. And I really treat you as an entrepreneur. And an entrepreneur only gets paid when they get results for other people. Okay, and so the first step I try to get you to shift out of is I'm just a realtor to I'm a businesswoman and I'm running a business. Okay, and that business has money that comes in and expenses that goes out and something that's left over. Lots of real estate agents do not plan for retirement. They do not they do not think about the future and because they don't think of their business like a business. So revenue comes in, expenses goes out, there's taxes that have to be paid, and then there's profit. How much money am I actually keeping? And then can I build such a business that I have excess cash left over? Because I think real estate agents should be investing in the very real estate they're selling. If you believe in real estate 100 percent you should become a real estate investor. <coughs> because 87 of the 87 100 most wealthy people in the country have real estate as part of their portfolio. You know why? Continue appreciates the value, right? There's tax depreciation, there's all kinds of things. So what I, my, my goal is to get my agents to where they're making enough money that they have enough excess cash left over here after they paid all their expenses. They can then take that excess cash and then reinvest it. So for example, an agent I'm coaching to get went from 35 to 105 deals, now he's taking his excess cash and turn around and putting it into commercial buildings. So he's building a commercial structure with the excess cash. So now he's not only selling real estate, but he's got enough cash over here to reinvest that. Most agents are not thinking like that. They're trying to just sell one more home. One more house. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I really got to get you thinking. You're a businessman and you're a businesswoman. We're running a business, and a business is not successful unless we have money left over at the end of every month that we can reinvest in our future. Could be our retirement, could be our future wealth building. Most agents have never even thought about that until somebody comes along and go, Look, you got to start thinking about these things. There comes a time when winter asks what you did all spring and summer. Unless you want to be selling houses at 95 years old, we got to start thinking about it later sometimes, right? That's what the coaching does, is it makes you think about these things, okay? <coughs> now, what, so we work basically over the course of a year, okay? We're, we're coaching people every month. So imagine coming to a coaching session every month here in Sugarland, and you're getting coached on different facets of running your business. Different facets from everything from the AEOS to the selling system to the follow-up, right? To how you extract referrals. You're taking that coaching and you're going back and you're, you're getting better, and because you're getting better, you're making more money. Everybody see how that works? If you've ever been in a really good coaching program, that, that's what it looks like. So let me show you what basically it looks like, because a lot of people want to know how, how do we do that. Also, 
there, there's a, there's a, I believe in community. One of the things I didn't anticipate when I built this coaching program is how powerful the network would become. So many of y'all been on, have you been in networking groups before where there's, where there's money exchanged between the network? Well, right now in our network, there are millions and millions of dollars being exchanged between people in the group. Everybody understand what I'm saying? So a lot of people are getting in a coaching program, but they're, but they're making all of their return back because you stepped beside her, and y'all did a deal together, and the next thing you know, you did two deals together, and next thing you know, you, got it. you understand what I'm saying? And so what's happening is there's becoming this very powerful network where people are making all their money back just by being in a, in a very progressive group of people because when you put successful people together with a high touch and high frequency, big things happen. Capital is raised, businesses are formed, joint ventures are started. There's all kinds of opportunity. So last night I took two of my real estate people with me to have dinner with Johnny Caraba. And I said, look, why don't you come meet Johnny and spend time with him? It'll help you run your real estate brokerage better. Because, you know, so what I'm doing is connecting all these people together. And so now they're exchanging with each other. They're exchanging money. They're exchanging ideas. And that's the power of a very strong network. So here's what I found that has worked for us. This is why it's growing so fast. Okay, basically what we do is we do a live event every month. Now, what's the power of a live event? How many of you have ever been coached over the phone before? Where a person called you at the beginning of a week? What I have found is that that works for some people, but a lot of times it's with a stranger who you don't know, and they're holding you accountable to a market they don't know, right? And, and you signed up to get somebody else, but you didn't get them. It'd be like you heard this person, but somebody else called you every week. And you're like, well, this person's in California, and they're talking to me about what's going on in Sugarland, and they don't know what's going on in Sugarland. So what I found is I'm a big believer in a live event. I'm a big believer in bringing people together every month, every 30 days in a cycle, okay? But, but for that power of the energy, power of exchange, okay? Also, we have a private Facebook group where I literally do coaching in there almost every day. So I put you know three to five minute coaching clips in there every day. I do Tuesday and Thursday rhythms, and a rhythm is like a like a two minute video where you're getting coached on a concept we're working on that month. So there's a real high touch, high frequency. We offer special courses every month, which are like 30 minute webinars where we're teaching those concepts. You just log in and you get to watch a concept. Like I may do million dollar follow up, and I may remind you about the follow up, or I may do person of interest, or I may do how to protect your confidence. I may, I may do how to map out and plan your days. These are little short courses throughout the month. So in a given month, uh, there's about 12 to 16 touches in a month in a 30-day cycle. Because I believe in high touch, high frequency. Here's what I found out. If you let people go too long, what do they do? They get lost. They get confused. They get out in left field. We all need a level of accountability. Notice I put those retreats up there. Did you put those in there? So we do retreats down at our house that we purchased in Florida. So what I did is I went down to Florida and I purchased this house, which is a nine-bedroom house in Seaside, Florida. And we do business retreats down there where we go down on Thursday, say Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And, and so I picked different people where we're doing different retreats. So this one's for founders. This one's on how to bounce back. I told you my wife was beautiful. And, you know, so, so basically, basically we go down there and spend three or four days just coaching people. Typically take 20 to 25 people. So you may go down there and be, be there with the top real estate agent from Tennessee or a top home builder from North Carolina. Or you may be down there with a top mortgage originator who's doing $150 million of production. You see what I'm saying? And you're living with each other for a couple of days, and man, it has been so powerful. We do retreats for women. My wife's doing retreats for women down there. We've got special retreats for our highest level coaching members. So these are things that we do in addition to all of the things that we, have, that we do every month is we just say, hey, we're gonna do this. Now, one more thing, then I'm gonna let Kanal wrap this up. One of the things I think that a good coaching program should do is it should, help you in all areas of your life. So we actually do things for you, what we call the monster producer. We also do things for kids, because I believe if we can help your kids do better, they're not learning certain things in school that they need to. I was a high school teacher and coach for a decade. I know what's being taught. I know what they need. So we, we created programming for kids. We created program for couples. So, because one of the number one things I hear in our program was I can't get my husband on board or I can't get my wife on board. I can't get them on board with this or I'm, I, I work hard every day and then I go home and I don't have the support of my spouse. 
So what we started doing is my wife is actually writing a book right now called Living with the Monster. I'll let y'all figure out which one that is. <laughs> and she's writing that because, because, because it would be a great book for Kanal's wife to read. Right? Here's the deal. A monster is a focused, driven, you notice that personality profile? My wife is a high S and a high C. Incredibly compliant, we are exact opposites. I'm a rule breaker, she's a rule follower. You follow what I'm saying here? So, so, how, so how do you live with a person that just go, 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 go? So we do things for couples in the program. So once a quarter we do, we do things for, for couples. We also do things on faith, kids. We do all those things and those things are part of the coaching program because I think if we can touch all parts of your nature. Now what's the lesson in that for you? If you do things for your clients, kids, and their families, it's going to make the relationship with you a lot stronger. Everybody with me? Which is why you should be doing customer appreciation events, things for them to bring their kids to, things for them to bring the couple to. You need frequency there, okay? So, so those are all the things we do in the coaching program, okay? So, Kanal, why don't you why don't you finish this up here, and then we'll let people, if they want to take action today, they, they can. Okay? Absolutely. So, just talking about what you said, bringing families in. Early on this year, our team did a client appreciation party. There's a, a place called Main Event, just in Stafford area, not too far from here. Mm -hmm. And they have bowling, pizza, food, video games, all those things. So our team shut down the whole Main Event. We invited almost 700 people, families with their kids, everyone invited. Right. And about four or 500 people showed up at that event. And was locked down, play what you want to play, eat what you want to eat, drink what you want to drink, for those four, six hours. We got comments and feedback from our business partners, from realtors, from industry leaders, from builders. Do you know what they said? I'm so busy selling homes or doing what I do. When I came for this event, I got to spend time with my kids, which I don't get to do when I go for events when realtors put together or builders put together. It's all about networking. But here I came in, my kids like to play basketball, hoop game, whatever. I played them for an hour. I haven't done that for years. So the comments we got from people were like, wow, your client creation party has been the best I've ever been. Now I can say we spent X dollars, how many referrals we got. That's the wrong way of looking at it. We made a memorable experience that they would say, what? Well, when it happens next year, I'm going to be there. Not for us, for their own family. That's a memorable experience. So in summary, what I want to end this coaching session is this. There's something called as coaching, and there's something called as babysitting. Okay? Coach Burke and Coach Seth, we are not babysitters. We're not going to ask you, hey, did you make your 20 phone calls today? Did you do that? Did you do this? No. The structure is given by the coaching program. It's up to you. You want to make a difference in your paycheck? Make a commitment. If you're pushed all the time to do certain things, you'll get pushed so far. If you don't have the drive, you'll get distracted. It has to come within you. So a lot of people, you know, they think, a oh, coaching program is for everyone. Actually, it's not. It's not for everyone. But if you want to be taught, you want to hire a teacher, that's for everyone. We went all went to school. Certain level or certain not, whatever level you went to. But being coached is an art. Being, to be able to uh, uh, take the thing that are being coached on, is a discipline. If you don't have self-discipline, this coaching program is not going to work for you. So you know what we have realized even within our team, within our office, there are plenty of opportunities to get coached, to get trained. I'll give you one example. Within our office, there are a lot of different vendors in the office. One of them is Michelle sitting back over there, and she's a reliant concierge person. So I'm all the time in the mode of learning. And about a year, year and a half back, I sat down with Michelle, tell me about yourself. And she lives in Cyprus. Now you live in News? Two years. Two years. So about an hour drive every day, two, three hours commute time. Sat down with her, she shared her story with me. She's committed, coming over here, lots of business coming on over here. In the next team meeting, I brought Michelle in and had her share the story with my whole team. My team members who live 20 minutes away from the office whine and complain, why do we have to come to the office every day? I'm an independent contractor, I'm a realtor, I want to do what I want to do. And when Michelle shared this, so you know what? If you are driven, if you're motivated, you'll drive to the moon for business. And based on her interaction with my team, some team members went and made a change in the lifestyle. So you know what? If she can do it, drive three hours every day, two hours every day, I'm just 20 minutes, so I'm gonna do that, right? So the people who were 
can be impacted, would impact it. Results came. But some team members were the whiny complainers. Nothing changed. Nothing changed. So we're going to sum it up here. You know, we're going to sit back, me, coach, myself, and our team member will be here. If you have more interest, learning more about the coaching program, let's talk more. But if not, hopefully you got some tools today that you can start applying today in your business. Yeah. Well, let me say it like this. I want you to imagine if you picked up three more deals next year, what that would pay out would be for you. Just think about that for a second. What if you picked up one or two more deals per month? Multiply that by 12. What if you picked up 24 more deals? What would that be worth to you? Because I know you're probably wondering, like, how much is this going to cost me? Is there a difference between cost and worth? There's what something is worth and what something costs. So this coaching program is typically $4.99 per month. Okay? What I told Kanal we would do is any person that takes action today can take off $1,200 of those dollars and get it for $3.99 per month. Now, here's my promise to you. If you take action on this and you don't pick up enough deals, a lot of deals to pay for that, and you do what you're supposed to do, we'll give all your money back. Because I'm that confident in what we could do. Everybody understand what I'm saying here? I want you to think about it. So I tell real estate agents, you got to get over, A, you don't need to be cheap in your thoughts. I don't mean that offensive. But a lot of agents never invest in themselves. And then they can't figure out why they can't get to the next level. Okay, I pay about 10000 a month to get coached. But that person has helped me make millions of dollars. You follow what I'm saying? So there's a cost to that, and I may look at it and go, oh my God, 10000 a month? Well, what if he helps me make $2, two million more dollars? Does it really matter about the 10000 No. So I want you to get your mind around investing in you <coughs> and literally getting the kind of bump that you could get through a, through a consistent coaching program with a great coach. Everybody understand what I'm saying? And I think at the end of the day, it's like it's nothing compared to how much money. Take that agent I moved from 35 to 105 deals. He, he pays 25000 a year for me to coach him. Okay, you saw that 25K level? I've got a 40K level, a 25K level, and then I got a 499 level. And so most of the people that I start coaching, they start making money, the first thing they do is they bump up. They're like, man, I'd like to really bump up. And here's what he'll say, I'm gonna make $250,000 more as a result of my investment. So if you're here today and, and we've spoke to you and you felt like, hey, this is something I'd like to do, he's right. I'm only looking for a certain cut of person, a person who's committed, not, not to me, a person who's committed to their self. Does that make sense? I'm looking for people. So if you're interested in that today, if you want to take advantage of that discount, which I, if you're, you're going to do it, I'd say just take advantage of it and do it. If you need to think about it or talk about it some more, the price will go up to four ninety nine, and And that's $1,200 you could have saved yourself if you just took advantage today. So his team can enroll you today, get you signed up, and then next month we're back at it again. And then the next month we're at it again, and we get better. There's two reasons agents don't do something. They don't believe it'll work or they don't believe they'll do it. Would you agree? They don't believe it'll work or they don't believe it'll do it. Well, I could show you, if I'm coaching one of the top REMAX teams in the country, I'm also coaching another top REMAX team over in Houston, I'm coaching some of the top REMAX people in the world. But not just REMAX, I'm talking, I'm coaching some of the top Keller Williams people, some of the top Weikert people, some of the top, Cent I'm coaching some of the top people on everything. Okay, and there's a reason they're coming to us because we're helping them get significant results. That's the only reason they would do it. You follow what I'm saying? So if you're here today and you're interested, we'd we would really love to work with you. And this is a cool space, and I and I think you're going to get all that money back and in, in some. Fair enough. So if you're here, if you want to sign up, just make sure you see your team. Where your team going to be? They're going to be over here. Okay, the team's over here, and they got the forms. We can get you started. Once we get you started, you're rolling. Okay, if you need to think about it, I put a form on your sheet that says, hey, fill this out and give me some information. Where are you struggling with, right? If you're not ready to commit today, but you're interested, you need to have a phone conversation with me, Kunal, somebody on my team, then just put that, put that down. I'm interested, right? Um, but that's all I got. Listen, I believe everybody needs a good coach in life. This guy's a rock star. He's got a rock star partner. I really believe that. Listen, I, I like getting coached by the best at the end of the day. So just think about that. And uh, God bless you, okay? Thank, Thank you. you, guys. Thank you so much.